y'all. Welcome to Ms. Clark's Chemistry class. I am here to help you understand everything you've been learning in class. Today's lesson is about percent composition, or sometimes it's called calculating the percent composition by mass. Don't let that extra by mass confuse you. It's the same thing. So go ahead and grab your periodic table, calculator, something to write with, and let's get started. So calculating percent composition by mass, that just means if you've got a compound, what percentage of that compound is made of this element? And what percentage of that compound is made of the other elements? We're gonna learn how to calculate that. But let's remember, percents are just parts of a whole. So you have a whole compound, the percent of one of the elements, that's the part, the part of the whole. And here's the basic formula, percent composition, we're going to take the molar mass of the specific element we're concerned about and we're going to divide that by the total molar mass part of a whole. The element's the part, the compound is the whole. Since we're talking about percents, we've got to turn that decimal number into a percent. Because if we're going to divide a smaller number by a bigger number, you're always going to get a decimal. Now you could just move that decimal two places over to make it a percent or we can multiply by 100. Let's look at an example. What is the percent by mass of potassium in potassium sulfate? Let's remember, potassium is a plus one, sulfate's a minus two. So if we crisscross those numbers down, the compound that we're going to be using is K2SO4. And our question wants to know, out of that whole compound, what percent is made of just potassium, just the K? In case you've already forgotten, let's look at that formula one more time. Molar mass of the element divided by the total molar mass. Molar mass. If you don't know how to calculate molar mass, I am going to kind of go over it right now, but make sure and go check out that video. Okay, so if we start with potassium, potassium's mass is 39.10. We have two of them though, so we've got to multiply it by two. That gets us 78.196. Sulfur, we only have one of those and its mass is 32.06. Oh, 32.07, 32.06. It's practically the same. We're just gonna go with it. Now let's look at oxygen. Oxygen's mass is 15.99. We have four of those. And so that gets us 63.996. For a total, our total molar mass, 174.252. Okay, so again, that formula said you got to take the individual element's molar mass and divide it by the total. And we were really only concerned about potassium. So remember that total molar mass, that was 174.252. If you take potassium's mass and you divide it by the total mass, we get 0.4488. Now again, we can multiply by 100 to get our percent, or you can just move over your decimal. So our final answer is 44.88% of potassium sulfate is potassium. Let's look at another example. What is the percent by mass of carbon in tetracarbon decahydride? Remember, tetra, that means four. Deca, that means 10. So our compound in question is C4H10. And the question wants to know the percent of carbon, but you've got to get the whole molar mass first. So we've got carbon, we've got four of them. Carbon's mass is 12.01, so 4 times 12.01 is 48.04. Okay, so hydrogen, we have 10 of them. Now, I'm realizing there's a little bit of discrepancy here. I've got 1.01, .01, but you know, my periodic table that I use, it uses more decimal points, like I mentioned before, and I kind of have a lot of them memorized, so I just topped it right on in as 1.008. It's about the same thing. It rounds to 1.01. .01. And so if we multiply those numbers together, we get 10.08. So the total molar mass is 58.12. Now remember, it's the part divided by the whole. We just wanna know about carbon. So we're gonna take our 48.02 and we're gonna divide it by that total mass, 58.12. Again, we can just multiply that by 100 to get a percent. And so we're gonna get 82.66. Tetracarbon decahydride, 82.66% of that compound is made up of carbon. I've got one more example. Now, sometimes your teacher may ask a question about one element of the compound, like the two examples I just did, 
Oftentimes, though, you've got to figure out the percents for every single element. So let's do one of those. It says, what percent by mass is each element in ammonium phosphide? Ammonium phosphide, remember, that's an ionic compound. Let's write that formula. Ammonium, that's a polyatomic ion. It's a plus one charge. Phosphorus, minus three charge. So if we crisscross those down, we're going to get an H43P. And we need to figure out the percent of each element. So let's start with nitrogen. We've got to distribute that three. So we have three nitrogens. So three times 14.007, that's 42.021. Okay, so now if we look at hydrogen, we've got 12 of them because four times three is 12. The mass of hydrogen is 1.008. When we multiply that, we get 12.096. Phosphorus, we only have one of those and its mass is 30.974. And so we still have 30.974. When we add all three of those numbers together, we get 85.091. That's our whole. These are our parts. So we took that total molar mass and we divided it by each of our elements. And I went ahead and just multiplied by 100 so we don't have to worry about moving that decimal. So the percent of nitrogen by mass is 49.38. Hydrogen, 14.22. Phosphorus, 36.40. Now when you add all of these up, it should add up to 100 because we're talking about parts of a whole. In a whole, that's 100%. 8 plus 2, that's 10, so that's going to be a 0. Carry the 1. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Definitely, we got to 100. Well, that's our lesson on percent composition. Pretty easy, right? If that really helped, leave me a comment and let me know. Share this video with your friends if they're struggling. Until next time, bye, y'all.